Hello everyone. My name is Rima Shammut and this is a presentation about gamification. Many companies, institutions, in addition to schools, have been noticing that their employees and students aren't motivated nor engaged in their daily tasks. They are bored with their jobs and with their learning experiences. This is why I'm advocating for the use of gamification as a bridge to cross the boredom divide into more exciting daily activities. Since I'm a teacher, I will be focusing my presentation on teachers and students while mentioning some other institutions. This is a brief video about gamification. I hope you will enjoy watching it. Hello, my name is Mary Conway, and I'm the writer of the Teach Up blog, Outside the Box Teaching. And today, I want to talk to you about a really powerful way to motivate the imaginations and efforts of all your students. While some classrooms often rely on more traditional lecture and discussion-based models of learning, other teachers have recently opted to adopt the concept of gamification. Here, as you might have guessed, teachers add the structure and concepts of games to their instruction. Today, I want to talk more about what gamification looks like and how you can implement it into your classroom. Although we've traditionally viewed games as a classroom distraction, nowadays they can be used for the good of education. Games incorporate several components that make them fun. Things like levels, challenges, feedback, creativity, multiple attempts, and rewards. Bringing these elements into your instruction doesn't mean turning class into a big playground for fun. What it does mean is that the approach to learning is based on an additional set of motivating criteria that young minds love, incentives for reward and engagement. Just like games reward players the more and the better they play, so too does a gamified classroom reward students for their participation and mastery. A few approaches you can take to gamification include things like creating activities where students can compete against one another, creating a series of challenges that individual students must master to move on to the next challenge, designing a rewards or level system that encourages students to get to that next level of mastery, conducting timed activities where students race against the clock, incorporating educational video games to complement instruction like Minecraft or Civilization, building quests that involve students completing a sequence of progressive activities, or providing Easter egg bonus rewards, knowledge, or tips to students who achieve certain goals. What's important to remember when it comes to gamification is that it's not just about playing games. It's about leveraging the unique structure of games to amplify classroom learning. This means that certain aspects of how you allow students to go about their learning may change. First, teachers traditionally use grades as rewards. Although grades may remain part of the classroom, teachers may incorporate alternative methods as well. Second, the fun thing about most games is that they offer multiple chances to succeed. This means that it becomes safe to experiment and fail in class, to try again and again. Third, collaboration becomes a much more important component. Students can work cooperatively and competitively in teams. Finally, student choice becomes more centralized as well. The gamified classroom allows students to focus on what they want to excel at and to earn the rewards and bonuses that match their efforts. Some critics of gamification have pointed out that while it might momentarily increase student engagement, it really only offers extrinsic motivation. They claim that in the long term, gamification does not teach students the inherent value of what they're learning. Teachers need to make sure that if they do this, student learning is always the priority. The moment the game becomes more important than the learning is the moment when teachers need to rethink how they're instructing. So when you're looking to boost student learning and engagement, consider gamifying your classroom. When students have this additional incentive to participate in your educational challenges, they may become as hooked on learning as they were hooked on the games they play on their own. Wow, you earned your first badge for watching the video. Great job! Many people think that gamification is the same as game-based learning. In fact, there is a difference between the two. Gamification doesn't necessarily involve using games in a specific setting, but it involves using game mechanics and elements to help engage and motivate people to learn and to reach their goals. An example of this could be giving badges to the students who have reached a goal, as was proposed in the video, offering them experience points as they progress through a level or a lesson unit, and so on. 
Since many schools are short on funds, new and expensive technological devices aren't necessary to gamify your classroom. All what is needed is a little creativity and some patience and time. Gamification is being used nowadays in many different environments, such as companies, universities, colleges, in addition to schools. Therefore, this innovation is not exclusive to children. Grown-ups have been shown to enjoy gamification as a way to engage them to work and reach their goals. Gamification was first used in a frequent flyer program where the reward of free tickets was offered in exchange for air miles. Soon, other companies followed suit. Nike Plus, Deloitte Leadership Academy, and Starbucks Rewards were all created to motivate people to reach a certain goal, whether it be wellness and fitness, educational goals, or just drinking more coffee. Pelling coined the term gamification when he wanted to make the usage of electronic devices such as ATM machines, vending machines, mobile phones more fun and quicker. He founded a company that eventually went bankrupt for lack of interest in the topic. But things have changed now, and there is a lot of interest in the topic. In the 1980s, computer researchers and computer designers wanted to understand the role of play in computer applications, and they started using video game elements in real-life contexts. Some of the video game elements that were transferred into real-life contexts were challenge, collaboration, real-time feedback, scaffolded learning, progress signposts such as badges, points, leaderboard. Please notice the extensive use of rewards in this diagram. Rewarding players gives them the motivation to continue playing. Gamification has been associated with education since the 1900s with the rise of psychoanalytic theory, when rewards were given to students to reinforce desired manners of conduct, such as submitting assignments, good behavior, following instructions. Does that sound familiar? Gamif gamification recognized the ability of games to capture and engage students in addition to increasing their motivation to learn new skills and try harder to achieve the required objectives. Gamification also should include a setting where children can compete and be rewarded for advancing to the top of the leaderboard by completing a series of reasonably challenging activities that are unpredictable. Children can work together to collaborate on joint projects, all the while giving them immediate feedback which allows the players to assess his or her performance and change their behavior accordingly. Allowing players to fail without negative consequences makes risk-taking more feasible, and having a storyline helps children feel engagement with the events. These are some of the research studies that were written about gamification, but since there is no physical game to produce, Gamification innovation relied on literature that discussed its advantages and on the stories of teachers and trainers who have tried using it and saw its gains firsthand. Some games use game-like mechanics to teach children about serious world issues, hence the term serious games. Food Force, created by the United Nations World Food Programme, teaches children about the humanitarian crises and how to respond to a disaster. Global Conflicts teaches children about conflicts in the real world. These companies and educational institutions noticed how engaged the players were in the game and decided to add gamification elements to their programs. Many companies and schools are trying to build their own serious games. Research suggested that gamification is not a one-size-fits-all concept. Each institution has its own needs and need to address those needs by adapting gamification to that specific institution. As we see in the diagram, 58% of consumers think that it is important for brands to be fun and playful, 
while 55% of Americans said they were interested in being employed by companies that use gamification as a means to increase their productivity. As we can see in the bar graph, people of all ages would like to incorporate gamification in their daily activities. From millennials to Gen Xers to boomers, most of them would like gamification to be part of their daily activities. Gamification started appearing on Gartner's hype cycle in 2011 on the peak of inflated expectations and moved over the next three years to the draw of disillusionment. But in 2015, gamification has disappeared from the hype cycle of emerging technologies. Does this mean that the innovation has matured? DeMonte suggested that the term gamification might not be in use anymore, but the game elements are as strong as ever in many environments, work and educational. What do you think happened to it? Maguire suggested that gamification is moving down the trough of disillusionment. Other researchers seem to share the same position. Rogers suggested that there is a technical and social gap between change agencies and their audiences. Therefore, a change agent should be the linker who aims to close this gap by playing the following seven roles. The first role is to develop the needs for change by assisting the teachers to become aware of alternate and better teaching methods such as gamification and by providing support to overcome potential problems. The second role is to establish credibility and trust with the teachers, which will empower gamification. Teachers should feel comfortable with a change agent and they should feel safe with their, while exchanging their opinions and thoughts with her. The third role of a change agent is diagnosing the problem by analyzing and determining the best ways to meet the teacher's needs, as well as enhancing the achievement of the students. The fourth role of a change agent is the creative role. She should motivate the teachers to help them successfully learn how to implement gamification in their classrooms in creative ways. To translate the plan into measurable actions is the fifth task that a change agent should undertake. Therefore, a change agent should help teachers who like gamification to translate these feelings and their intentions into an action plan where they actually use it and see its benefit. The sixth role, according to Rogers, is the role of stabilizing the adoption of gamification, as well as making sure that the adoption process is made resilient and stands the test of time. The final role of a change agent is when she makes sure that the teachers can rely on themselves to adhere to gamification. The teachers should reach the achievement of dependency on themselves to follow through with the use of gamification and should solve potential problems without the reliance on the change agent. Since I used to be a language arts teacher, I would assume that a homophilous teacher will be one of the early adopters of gamification. Rogers suggested that the teachers will accept the, op the opinions of a change agent if they believe that she is similar, sympathetic, aware of their needs, communicates well, and is credible. To persuade a teacher to adopt gamification, I will have to build a relationship with her, ask her permission to observe her, and then try to work gamification into her teaching practice without major interruptions to her classes or to her teaching te uh, techniques. This will help alleviate the resistance that gamification might face because of fear of how it will impact that teacher's daily activities. 
The principal will be the laggard in adopting gamification. She does not have the final say in the decision-making process. She also has so much to lose if the innovation didn't prove effective. But if a teacher adopts the innovation, and together we show the principle that gamification does engage students in their learning process, and that their performance is enhanced because of this engagement, then she might be more willing to sell the idea to the board of directors. I will also need to build a trusting relationship with her so that she trusts and values my opinions. Roger suggested that for an innovation to be diffused successfully, it has to reach critical mass, where it has been adopted by enough people to make the innovation sustainable. This cartoon shows the progress of the adoption of an innovation. Innovators are usually excited about the new innovation, as are the early adopters. If the innovation makes it across the adoption chasm in the early, to the early majority, then the chances of this innovation's survival increase considerably. It is an uphill battle for the innovation to reach critical mass. As Rogers pointed out, both diffusion systems, centralized and decentralized, have a valuable input in the diffusion process. I do not believe that one system outperforms the other. I have witnessed firsthand when the administration installed interactive whiteboards in the classrooms at my school without preparing the teachers first. The whiteboards ended up being used minimally and just for basic tasks such as watching videos on them. On the other hand, I don't think that a teacher can influence the decision-making process without the help of the principal. This is why both are equally important and both should be approached with equal enthusiasm about the innovation. As we saw previously, a chasm exists between the innovators and the early adopters. Once the innovation crosses that chasm, then the chances of it reaching critical mass status increases. As people become aware of gamification, realize the need for it, and its benefit to the targeted group, more and more adopters will emerge. Designers of gamification products have to take the needs and requirements of the targeted group into consideration. A one-size-fits-all attitude will not help gamification reach critical mass. Each institution has to study well the needs of their employees and adapt the innovation to fill in this gap. A change agent can play this role of studying what needs to be changed and propose the best ways to introduce and implement that change with the least amount of negative consequences possible. A clear plan and specific goals have to be set and followed to ensure critical mass adoption. We should take into account the different players' preferences and work them into the system of the institution to minimize the resistance to adopt gamification. Great job! You get another badge for watching my video. These are my references, and I hope that my presentation will persuade you to try gamification in your own classroom.